Every guy knows that about his girl. Your chick is one sip of alcohol between the best blowjob of your life or yesterday's spaghetti in your dick hair. <laughs> Welcome to Something Crunchy, the Valley's number one comedy entertainment podcast. Biscuit is homies with Blake. Blake is the older brother of Blair. And Blair is married to Biscuit. Here are your hosts, Colin Blake with Blair and Tyler Dressel. All right. Welcome to Something Crunchy. I'm Colin Blake. With me as always, Tyler Dressel. And Blair should be joining us soon. Thank you for joining us by way of 97.3 The Rattler, wherever you get your podcast. We have such a crunchy guest joining us tonight. He's an actor, radio show host, fellow podcaster, and stand-up comedian who you know from the bonfire on Sirius XM and his podcast, A Legion of Skanks. Please welcome Big J Okerson. Yeah, what's up, guys? How are you doing, my man? Good. Um, I know we hung out. We got to hang out this weekend a little bit. Yeah, just had you back in the Valley this weekend. Always good to see you when you're here. Phoenix loves <clears> you, man. It was a great turnout. Yeah, no, they were fun. That club's also just great. I like the whole kind of like atmosphere there. I was excited to meet you guys, and then I didn't know that you were a uh, brother, brother-in-law, wife team. Yeah, first. that's right. <laughs> it's a family affair around here. <laughs> Blair was pretty disappointed she didn't get a chance to seduce Christine. Does she ever join you on the road? Once in a while, yeah. She's going with me on, we're doing the Burke Kreischer cruise next weekend, so she'll be with me on that. That's right. That gets you through Halloween, right, on the cruise? Yes, indeed. On the high seas. <laughs> when you guys travel, do you like hotels or Airbnbs? Um, it depends. I've actually started doing, like, Airbnbs a little more lately. In places like Florida and stuff, it makes more sense to, like, you know, for the price of a hotel, you can get, like, a pool and everything. Yeah. However, you are also staying in someone else's house, and I I have gotten, especially for doing it for so long, I've gotten so used to the world of like, just like hotels. I just know how they work. You know, I'm just very used to them, and I kind of like that. You know, everything's there if you need towels. I always feel like I'm in somebody else's house when I'm Airbnb, and you are. <laughs> you are. Do you worry about having sex in Airbnbs with all the hidden cameras they use now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no. If you're gonna get it and put it out there, I guess get it and put it out there. Yeah, tag you. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna be attractive what you see, but I'm gonna be trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> Which position would you most fear getting caught in for your hidden sex tape? Oh, uh, shit. It's gotta be. Oh, I probably just on top, but like really on top <laughs> where gravity's really doing what it do on my body. Right. <laughs> or yeah. Or just flat out sitting in a chair. <laughs> that's the worst. Yeah. That's the, that's the Lotus blossom. She's on top, but you're both sitting Indian style. Has that been oh. yet? Is Indian style? Is, is that a cancelable offense? Yeah. Can you still say that? There's gotta be a new version of that. I think it's in gin style. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a fan of the classics. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite accessory to use in the bedroom? Accessory, yeah, mm, that's a yeah. That, yeah, that is a good one. Like, are you uh, are you like a little vibrating attachment or full on milking table situation? No, I would say I've never like my chick's always been like uh, she has to use a vibrator also, or it ain't ever gonna happen. I don't know if her clitoris is made of burlap, but whatever it is. <laughs> Titanium. I mean, short of biting it off, I don't know what's going to get there. So she has to use some equipment on that thing. Um, <laughs> so I guess that, like the Hitachi magic wand thing. Anything else I've ever tried has never really been anything that's like worth, you know what I mean? I've never ever used like a, like a male sex toy ever. It's so fun. When I was a kid, we... uh my friend Randy, we went over his house. And it was so funny how fast the switch was. We went in his dad's drawer and we found a gun, a loaded like pistol, like, you know, like a, like the barrel, you know, the uh, six shooter, I guess. Uh, revolver, that's what you would call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we found his little revolver. I mean, we picked it up and it was like, uh, it was really divine intervention. It was like right before any of us could do anything stupid or, God forbid, killed or hurt each other. We're like, whoa, a gun. And then we were like, whoa, a fake pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so in the same drawer, there's like a Fifi and a pistol. Wow. Yeah. This guy and knows how to party. Yeah. Oh, shit. So 
so we put the pistol down and then I remember there being quite a conversation about who was going to go first. And I don't remember who went first. All I remember was I was supposed to go second. <laughs> and when he came out with it, we were all like, oh, wait. <laughs> like, and then we all hit us once and goes, wait, now there is no seconds on this. <laughs> like, there's no seconds, there's no thirds. You know what? The first guy, you just let us know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably saved our lives from that but i bet it only, is. Uh, yeah saved you from I've, some infections for sure yeah i've um i've had through the years like given for free like a couple of fleshlights and i've even heard people say fleshlight rules but i don't it's one of the things i guess you have to like just go for it i guess to understand what's happening because it doesn't make sense to me I it got, doesn't make sense that that I, would feel any better than just hand. Yeah, it, you know, I got one in the military <laughs> gift. Um, somebody mm -hmm. gifted one to me, and it was it's not good. There's a lot of setup and breakdown. There's cleanup involved. Like, you can't just, you know, there's, it's not something that you can just snap one out. You got to take that thing on a date. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing I could think would feel good enough that I wouldn't never do again after I had to wring my cum out of it <laughs> you put it in the dishwasher and then let it just flap all over your dickies cups oh yeah sure that's probably what's wearing off the ink on all of my stadium cups <laughs> that's, right. that's the fleshlight remnants yeah this used to be a sixers cup but now it's just scratched off with cum residue <laughs> All right, so the equipment is questionable. Did, does she ever want to use some equipment on you? Like on a scale from one to Jason Ellis's OnlyFans page, what are your boundaries? How many Oof. inches? Mm, a, a finger tops. Finger tops. <laughs> two fingers. I, think, I feel like two fingers has worked at a time, but I think for the most part it's a finger, and then it just starts getting – and by the way, none of it is about feeling gay or those kind of nerves. It's nothing to do with that. It's just pure like – not pleasant feeling <laughs> <laughs> it's nice after a rough day you know if, honestly god if, if getting wailed in the ass felt fantastic for me i would just be super into that <laughs> i mean nothing is it not even being gay i would just be like hey christine work this thing over <laughs> so who's on your short list for a celebrity menage Ooh. Celebrity menage. Hmm. It's hard with celebrities because the most popular is going to be someone a little scuzzy. <laughs> Probably. Oh, you know what? This is just because it's fresh in my mind, but I'd say a good Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Seems like she gets down. She has aged surprisingly well for is you know what it makes sense? Like yeah. I never thought she I never really found her overly attractive. I never thought that was her thing. She just seemed like kind of like a kid. Yeah. I mean, and like that. And, like, and just kinda of, and just kinda of like silly and stupid. But she's like now an adult. Like not very much an adult. She's probably, I guess, close to my age. Or in her probably forty or something like that. And uh and she looks like she stayed looking the same. So now she looks great for her age. Totally. And just with her dating history, I bet she's like, you know, that fucking uh, some 41 guy was probably yeah. blowing snot rockets on her back and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not. I'm like, you probably though. can't. Yeah, you probably can't gross her out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Crunchtober. We got to at least bring up the ween. What's your favorite horror movie or horror franchise? Um, you know, with the franchises, I think it's probably more modern with like those final destinations and like the saw movies even though they're not all good and most of them aren't good probably like they're all like uh i did like the consistency of like you know what you're gonna get you absolutely know final, what you're gonna final, get. like final destination you go it's like it's nothing to do with the stupid storyline i get it they're gonna cheat death then that's gonna come for all of them but it's just like the fun ways they did it i thought was more like that was kind of like the fun horror as far as like I wish there was more like super scary, scary like horror. But I'm also the horror to me that scares me was always more like David Lynchy type stuff. It was never like Freddy Krueger. Right, right. Yeah. Less horror villain, more thriller, psychological shit. Yeah, but not even psychological. With the element of like, but like the the supernatural was like inexplicable. Like the Twin Peaks kind of. Stuff. I don't know if you guys watch Twin Peaks at all. Right. But like that was that kind of thing where it was just like. 
you know, a, a curtain appears in the woods and you walk through it and there's weird jazz music playing and a midget talking backwards. Like <laughs> that seems like, like just that weird, like that's just such like a, you know, it's like he knows how to like almost like show you nightmares, like non sequitur nightmares on the screen. I find that much more scary and stuff like than. I mean, most horrors are PG thirteen and they're like terrible. And they're know? terrible for sure, especially these days. What's the absolute most fucked up movie you've ever seen? Serbian film. That's it ex- lives up to the hype. It's the right answer. <laughs> that one stays with you. I've seen them all. We, yeah. we get shit sent to us all the time, try and update our list every year of the top five most fucked up movies. And so I go through them all in most of them. Have you ever gotten to the, I'll tell you what's a close second, and I don't know which one's which necessarily, but like are pretty fucked up, but they're interesting. Is the uh, August Undergrounds. Have you ever seen those? I saw all of those. And man, yeah. those, are, uh, those are fucked up. And they did a lot with some cheap practical effects. And it's, that's what's like, but that makes sense. Like, that's what, like, as fucked up and crazy as the story is and, like, what they're doing and everything. Like, you know, almost like I kind of watched it. By the time I, like, read the stuff about it, I watched it where I really saw, I'm like, oh, man, this is, like, a really, like, grassroots project. Like, this guy, like, you know, I always said those movies were kind of what made them kind of scary, uh, in a sense, and, and fucked up. Was, like, the nudity in those movies was very rarely, if ever, I'm thinking like classic horror fake titted nudity it was like they had like naked girls in there that were just very like mom bods and very like regular looking people there was nothing sexy about it like something about seeing somebody who who know you know the woman knows she doesn't have like a, a stripper body you know what i mean agreeing to do this like full nude scene was like and there's almost something impressive about that where i'm like dude this guy really got people to believe in his project and he's like a uh the star of that is the guy who like made it and he went to that Tom Savini school of like special effects. And that's just like his, you know, it's filmed like it's on VHS for that reason. Cause he wants the, the effects to look very real. So, you know, they're all sort of blurry, but they're also like horrific. Like, it's amazing what he did. Yeah, it is. And it, it's grotesque. And, and those movies are, like, they're just fucked. He has like, incest and everything. It's like all kinds of crazy shit. It's fucked up. I get so disappointed when people send these titles of just, you're like, this wouldn't even crack the top 50. <laughs> this is a pathetic excuse for a recommendation. Oh, I'll tell you right where I check out when someone goes, seven, get out of here. Get out of here. You can't and by the way, by the way, seven, phenomenal film. It is. You know, yeah. Inarguably, but I'm like, I'm like there's... And plenty fucked up, films, but like, yeah. yeah. Studio fucked up is not even close to anything that independent fucked no, up would get to. Good point. Sometimes they leave out the fucked up ones also because, like, I tell you what, doesn't rarely ever make those lists. I think Bully is a super fucked up movie. Yeah. Um, With the Florida killing, where they killed uh, Nick Stahl. And yeah. Things. That was that was a pretty fucked up movie. Uh, there's a lot that I think are like, there's a movie called The Girl Next Door. Did you ever see that? Girl Next Door? Um, it now, sounds familiar, now, but no. Well, so there's a movie about uh, called The Girl Next Door. That was the obvious. That's the Eliza or whatever. Yeah, oh, movie yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah, Eliza. So there's, 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 there's that, Cut but there's one, called, there's, there's one called uh, Jack Ketchum, I think his name. Jack Ketchum's Girl Next Door. And it's a movie about... Uh, very strangely enough, the guy who at the end of the movie you see is narrating it, telling a story from his childhood, is uh, uh, Dickless from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Remember the guy, <laughs> like uh, Peter, whatever, who was wanted to shut down the machine? Yeah. From the EPA. It's like, yeah, that guy was the one narrating this movie. is The blonde it's, guy? The... Yeah, or he's like a gingerish kind of guy. Oh, yeah. ging- the guy, the guy who's fucking with Bill Murray. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Peck. Yes. The guy who hates him. Yeah. yeah. Um, that guy's the uh, guy narrating the movie, but it, it's, it takes place. It's like a flashback to like the fifties, I think. And this this girl and her little sister get like kind of orphaned because their parents died, and they move next door with their aunt to these like a bunch of boys like who hang on the neighborhood. It's kind of like a Stand by Me vibe. Okay, but the aunt is like a man hating, or she's like a woman hating like old lady. She's like a crazy, bad shit lady. And just the movie, it's a torture porn movie. As the movie progresses, she just hates how pretty like her teenage uh, her teenage um, niece is. And so she starts like letting the boys come over and like beat the shit out of her. And just by the time it gets to the end, they like have her tied to a uh, like bed frame almost. Just like a springy bed frame. Fucking wild. Oh my Jeez. God. That it's is a, it's wild. A bat shit. And it's just kind of like this kid like, you know, 
being like you know he wants to help her but he's just like the mob mentality of what's happening is pretty crazy but that's a, that's a twist that never makes the list doesn't make the list no and tale as old as time i'm surprised to hear that <laughs> yeah can can you ever watch the uh that, that guy who did bully did a bunch like you ever see like ken park and movies like that where it's like no there's like, there's like a lady who has like sex with an underage kid like it's full penetration real sex it's pretty insane what wow yeah you could find it in uh online in places but it's really not uh which was really not like available like ken park it's hard to find i got like a, and there was like a, a place like here called kim's video where you get probably like, important shit and stuff <laughs> yeah get on a nap that's the stuff i like that's when i know that we're on to something special is when it's like really hard to find if it's in another language all the better yeah yeah i was uh, another one that lived up to the hype when i finally saw it was like cannibal holocaust is a fucked up movie it That's is really a fucked up movie. Book. It is. And I like the uh, uh, Green Inferno as well, which is kind of similar. The Eli Roth yeah, version they did of that. They did you know what it is? I, I think when that was coming out is when I went back and watched Cannibal Holocaust. And I watched them too close together because Cannibal or the Green Inferno was like, it was just so, so movie. It was a movie. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was a, uh, like that first one was like, pretty fucked up because you're, you're like, even in the time, you're like, how did they do that? Like, how did they film that? <laughs> like, a bunch of people alive like in like one scene you're like i don't know how they fuck they did that back then but the, you know that was like a questionable a effects of film. you're right and yeah in the new one it was basically apocalypto but just more violent yeah. and well you'll be spending your but, halloween at uh fully loaded at sea in miami yeah it's gonna be a bunch of stand-up shows and live podcasts and i know it's Bert, so he'll make it as fun as it could be because man do i not like cruises <laughs> <laughs> Is it the food or just being trapped on a <laughs> boat with not the ability to get off? It's just, I, weirdly enough, I've been on this boat so many times. Like this, like every time I've done it, I've done the ship rock with the bands. I've done the Impractical Jokers cruise, what's comedy cruise, uh, a bunch of them. This is my, probably like my ninth or tenth one that I'll be going on. And it's, it's this boat a lot. So it's just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, done Bert's, it. like, Bert, like Bert's thing is like, is going to make it very fun. That's what it is. It'll be a lot of big events and stuff that we're all going to take part in. It'll be like a drinky, like fun thing for sure. But like, just in general, like I, when people go on cruises, like just a cruise, not like a, the Bert Kreischer cruise or ship rock. And there's like, yeah, we're going to take a cruise for four days. I'm like to do what? It's like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like a buffet, and like uh, it's just like it's so bad. At least you'll be with friends, good company, and that, that's yeah. Be, that's I'm saying like there's, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of buddies in this one and stuff. And I said I've been the, I've had like fun with them plenty. I'm just like I'm surprised that what do you know what I mean? It's like it's just a surprising like that this is a thing that people get so stoked on. It, yeah. it is a thing people get so stoked on. That's for sure. But I mean, just like the regular cruises, like the one these chartered ones make sense. You know what I mean? Like if I never went on a cruise in my life and it was like. Hey, you want to go on your favorite band's cruise? I'm like, oh my hell yeah, what yeah. an amazing thing, you know. But like when someone's just like, now we're just taking a cruise and it's gonna let us off on some port where you know you can buy a a drink <laughs> that comes in a giant cup with a wacky straw, and like you know, a <laughs> seventy dollar t shirt that says Senior Frogs or something. Right, <laughs> right. I'm just that's what I just don't fully get. I'm like, just go to like you know, Vegas, get an Airbnb, get an Airbnb, like you know, at the Jersey Shore, <laughs> like. <laughs> that is your classic Caribbean cruise, your tequila shot in the face at Senior Frogs. Yeah. And once you've done it once, though, like you've done it. What would be pretty rad would be like, uh, do like seeing like I, if you were like a swinger going one of them kind of cruises, because that's probably a, a fucking party. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> a good like, time. Uh, but, 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 uh, but if also if you were just a single person looking to hook up on a cruise, on like a regular cruise, that also seems like a, like a nightmare in some way. Like if you strike out, you're going to pass that person 80 more times. Yeah. (laughs) Seated next to them at dinner and then run into them at the buffet, standing in line for the, (laughs) still enough of the water. Still no, still no. Okay. I could, I could definitely see like, all right, I think I finally burped out all that pizza. I'm going to go jerk off to the orgy happening in the (laughs) Spinnaker lounge. (laughs) I'm going to hit the poop deck for a blow bang. (laughs) Chinese eight way happening down in the sun deck. <laughs> when we were hanging out the other day, we were talking about the Lufa trend and you wanted to break down to the swingers code now that you, you bring it up. Oh yeah. 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 First this started in like some horny retirement community in Florida called the villages and has since it's become a thing. 
you hang a oh, loofah yeah. somewhere on the outside of your car and each color has a meaning like white that's for beginners just testing the waters purple means a voyeur and you're into watching the Chinese eight way on the sun deck that's mm -hmm. the purple loofah mm -hmm. pink that's a soft swap more of a free floating thumb in the hot tub situation Bl sure. <laughs> for sure blue that's your lowest level of full swap Ugh. get excited about a blue basically a white loofah what who that, thinks they're a yellow is that just oral play I guess I don't know. I turned in my blue for a yellow a long time ago, and that's, it might, it might be never, handies I would, only. <laughs> I would never understand in that world. I would never understand like the rules of anything. I've seen that like in uh, like ads before, or shit you'd see like in magazines and stuff, and it was just like only um, you know, it's like it's like well, so but no kissing. The kissing's too intimate. Like what? So, <laughs> either you're in or you're out. There yeah. shouldn't be all these <laughs> rules right. and That's regulations. I mean. like, uh, like there I'm should like, be like, fuck, like, either a loofah like, is like, hanging on the back of your car or it's yes. not. Yes. Yeah, it's like we're down the fuck or we're not down the fuck. No, they have all these different like levels. Like yellow is the minor leagues. These couples are actually pretty fun. And then black is your full swap. Who wants her? Now, listen, I get the one for also, like, the, you want to check it out, but who's getting that invite all the time? Like, yes, come watch us fuck only. <laughs> first, like, that You're right. You know what I mean? like, Purple is the creepiest for me. Just, I'm here if you'd like me to watch you bone. Now, at the same time, I, that'd be one of the ones hanging off my car of, of a series, I assume. <laughs> um, but the purple one because I'm like, oh, by the way, I'll just check you out through a window, too. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather see that than those two see my wiener. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch. I'll spank bank and take it on for later. Yeah. I hope they're not even that hot. It's better if they're just regs. <laughs> <laughs> Sixes. Yeah, you don't have to perform so yeah, hard for just a six. A, just some just some lady that works at a Rite Aid tomorrow. Yeah. She's kind of bitchy. You're, uh, yeah. you're, you're August Underground kind of chick. Yeah. Yeah, you're basic August Underground, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> you're run of the mill August Underground. Augie Under. Augie Under. Under. That's so fucked up. I love it. <laughs> She's going to have a story to tell for years. <laughs> You know, I had this one Augie last week, and let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Philly guy, Eagles fan. Two of us are from Dallas. Let's get into it. Our first sure. game coming up on November 5th. How is this going to go? It's the 8.30 game, too. It's nighttime. It's an 8.30 game. That's right. Yeah. Um, I, you know what's funny? I am only being told that uh, that the Cowboys stink from Cowboys fans. Uh, which is very rare, but there I think rare. everyone's lo everyone's lost their. Uh, it's their not their year. Dak Prescott. People turned on Prescott. It's still our year, but no, yes, we have turned on Dak Prescott. <laughs> I'm officially over. It <laughs> happened two games ago. I think it was the San Francisco <laughs> game. I'm done. No matter what he does this I year, thought, I'm over I it. Thought from the when I was paying attention to the first couple of games, when I'm trying, you know, you want to see if like they're the only undefeated team. Your team's the only undefeated team, right? So you're looking for the first loss from everybody else, and like it seemed like. Uh, Cowboys were on a fucking tear. They were for a dangerous. minute. I mean, when they played against the Jets and the Giants, yeah, they they were dominating. And I took Tyler to go see them kick uh -huh. the shit out of the Cardinals. Uh -huh. That didn't go my way. <laughs> Their only win so far this season. <laughs> it's against the Cowboys. They're one in five right Is now. Is that real? They're yeah. one in five. Or, Are or they really one in five? Yeah. Man. So when, who, who did they play this week? Yeah, who fucking cares? Yeah, <laughs> they're one in five. <laughs> no, the, no, the real game to discuss. We're here in yeah. Arizona. You're a Philly guy. We got a big game happening tonight. Yeah. By the time this comes out, yeah. we will have already known the results. Any bold predictions, Sir Jay? I um, I really tell you what. Like I said, I've just kind of the last two postseasons when I've jumped back on with the Phillies, and they're a uh, pretty similar look team from last year. The Phillies. I uh, I thought they were going to win it. Yesterday and the way they lost, how they lost them, I'm, I'm surprised they went to a game. So I think they're going to pull it out tonight because they again, if they if it just goes to like, it stands the reason that I mean what they've been doing in that stadium has been pretty amazing this postseason. I mean they're like cracking record breaking home runs in, <laughs> in games. So like that's uh, it's been pretty impressive. But you know, it's just, the beauty of my love of baseball is that it's soft enough that it's just like if they lose tonight, I'll be like, huh. Ah, all right, watch an episode of American Dad or I'm, something. You know, it's like I'm the exact same you know, way. You know, I have two people I'll text and I'll be like, "Fucking Phils, huh?" But like, it's not that. 
the <laughs> the Eagles. It bums me. And again, just like being an adult in general, like it doesn't take me out the way it used to anyway. But like, um, you know, I may have said this to you guys as so we went to a, a Super Bowl. Burnt tickets to the Super Bowl, and um, Eagles lost. And you still have to keep that thing on of like, nah, but you know what? Look, we had a good time, man. It was a like good friends hanging out, good time, good food, blah blah blah. I go, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the Eagles lost. So all miserable. Fell to pieces. Right when the, right when the Eagles lost, the whole thing fell to pieces. I'm like, ah, oh, now I gotta fly home and blah blah blah. And this was out of this, and I missed the show at work, and so, you know what I mean? It was all these like. A thing. Can you imagine if you drop six thousand dollars a ticket on top of that? Oh my god, dude! I, Flu, I, got paid, hotels. I, he played. He paid substantially more than that, Bert, and he had a I'm place sure. for us and everything. So, so what could you do other than go, dude? This was the greatest experience of my life. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you just gotta be like, that was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I'm so great. It Thank was, you. Uh, and, I, and again, the hindsight of it is like, of course, it was fun. But like that day, when everyone's still doing like the dude, it was just about hanging out with good friends. I'm like, nah, I was pretty sure the Eagles were gonna win that, and they did not. And that was horrible. <laughs> and that's like, <laughs> and all the confetti went down, and it sucks even worse than losing at home because we can't all sulk together because half the people are screaming and freaking out, excited. You got to walk through all the screaming happy fans on the way back out and oh, mis- miserable walk of shame. Eat your eat your crow. They just crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, fucking fat Rihanna. I'm really happy though. <laughs> I'm happy though. I'll tell you what though. The Eagles were winning at halftime, so I wasn't able to I'd be lying if I said I wasn't jamming on some Rihanna. She was going for it. I was like, get it, girl. She was going for it. God, I had a bunch she of good Rihanna it. jokes she when that it. came out. She it, did kill it, but she was so pregnant. Yeah. She was extra pregnant. Oh, she was yeah. so pregnant. Distractingly if she, pregnant. If she, if the Eagles were losing at halftime, I would have just <laughs> uncorked on her I'll light her up oh i would have fat joked her right out of the building but but they were winning so i was i was grooving i was dancing in the aisles drinking beers that's awesome well you bring up music you sport a metal look you talk about hip-hop the most but you listen to yacht rock do you still turn down for yacht <laughs> Oh, dude, hell yeah. I get weigh in on some yacht. You and Tyler you guys, both. I, I, I'm, I'm actually, love actually, it. I'm, not, I'm actually pretty – one of the things I am excited about on the cruise, I think uh, the band of Docksiders are playing on Burt's Cruise, and they are a yacht rock like cover band, and that's awesome. That's exciting. <laughs> I will probably jump up there and kick a few out there with them. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> well, what is it about the Yacht Rock? I mean, Tyler's in the same boat. What, what is it that, that draws you in? As I turn 40, man, I just, I can't get enough. Yeah, you know, how old are you, Tyler? You're 40? 42. 42, so yeah, I'm so 45, so I'm a little bit older than you, but it's probably a very similar thing. It just, for some reason, it takes me back to sitting in the back of my mom's car. Oh, like, okay. She's just driving, it's just, it's just the radio that was on then. It's, it's I mean... Because Yacht Rock, just to me at the time, it was almost on the radio with the same genres. Like, even though it's not Yacht Rock, it's like, you know, why I know like Madonna and all the top 40 of like the 80s, sure. you know? There was but something I comforting just, going back to the 80s. You're in just the back. Popular just back then. Yeah, getting but, blown on some Marlboro smoke coming from the front and yeah. you're just living life. Man. Oh, before it, had a, before it had a name Yacht Rock, I used to call it Silk Shirt Rock. That was what <laughs> I called it. And I was just that kind of just like ambrosia and stuff like that. I mean, and by the way, also, those songs, what's funny about them is like you'd ignore them as older songs, but when you hear some of them, they slap number one yeah the lyrics the lyrics are dope on a lot of them i mean ambrosia goes for on a couple of them shit shit holds up there's actually lyrics too like it does it does hold up oh yes christopher how much cross I feel? is a poet bro <laughs> you know the song by ambrosia how much i feel the last verse is him calling the ex-girlfriend and saying, hey, I just want you to know I'm married and everything, but when I fuck her, I generally think of you. <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, the song, the song, I don't want to lose your love tonight. That's all about like his girlfriend's away. He has a girl to come over and then he tells her to beat it and don't whine about it. <laughs> you, do, you, you, you do the deal, bitch. <laughs> I miss quality writing like that in yeah. music. You don't see that shit oh. anymore. You're not going to see Sexy Red throwing shit out like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny fucking bit, man. That Sexy Red did something else. 
she is uh, i mean i josh had a meyer said he went to her concert the other night because it was just like free <laughs> and so we went to her show but uh i didn't even get to say this i don't think on the show yet but like she uh she performs so i live right uh around from terminal five is a venue here in new york and um she did a show the other night i didn't know it was her but as i was walking my dog up the block <clears throat> the show let out not counting see-through full tits and <laughs> sometimes and also generally ass or thong maybe see not not, not including see-through which was hundreds of those i saw just five to six just loose tits just a <laughs> naked tit open tit uh, just open out to, and and like in like the sense that like the shirt couldn't possibly cover it for more than five minutes in a stretch isn't it an open and carry it was, state it was <laughs> i don't know but it was a uh, it was so wild i was just coming out and i'm like what is this woman doing she is talentless jibber jabbering on stage and not dancing really it was so wacky what's her song beat the puss up is that it <laughs> probably <laughs> sure dreads wave your wave your dreads oh that's it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Wave your dreads. <laughs> shake your dreads shake your dreads shake your dreads <laughs> shake and i think that's the song that's all that's the it lyrics. yeah that's you it know, over yeah. and over again a banger and everybody yeah. everybody everybody in the audience was just singing along like that's the part of a song that i would usually like skip past like you know like at the end of a song and they just keep fading out with the same word <laughs> that's the whole song <laughs> And then there's the feral tits out, out the whole, out the whole time. It sounds yeah. like a fun show. I mean, I might go to the show. Listen, it made me wish I was inside the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I saw all the naked tits, I'm like, oh, this must have been crazy in there. Just bring some Bose noise canceling headphones in there and listen to some yacht rock, and then just oh no, if I'm gonna drink watch. it, in, I'm gonna no, if I'm gonna drink it, in, I'm gonna drink in that nonsense. <laughs> just, I'm gonna take in a whole like uh, 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 just chant chant music. <laughs> Soak in the whole experience. See if your titties fall out, you know. Just going to go, Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. See, you throw a beat on it, now it's catchy. Now yeah. people are joining in. I don't like that. <laughs> That's the don't stuff that'll words. drive you to Yacht Rock in a hurry. Yeah, don't let that, don't let that word spread. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the fast five where we ask you five general questions and you answer as fast as you can. Okay. Should we wait for the... Uh... Yeah, we'll wait for your siren behind you. Hold on. It's New York, man. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it, it sounds siren. extra New York behind you there. There's always some sirens. It's hilarious. I'm way up high, too. It's really the city. I said that actually last night to my girlfriend. I was like, I'm going to get some noisy over here. There's not stop <laughs> fire engines and shit. <laughs> Go ahead, my apologies. No worries. All right. Favorite app on your phone? Candy Crush. Nailed it. <laughs> favorite movie? Heat. Real favorite movie? <laughs> August Underground. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity crush growing up? Alyssa Milano. Oh, good answer. Oh, nice. All right. And what are Blair's chances with Christine? 100% you catch her in the room. <laughs> she had to have his throat in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we like to play a game on every episode and include our guest as well. You have ties to Philly and to the adult entertainment industry, so this was easy. I'll give you the name, and you tell me if it's a bar in Philly with shitty reviews or the name of a porn film. Okay. All yep. right. Anal Icons 3. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kung Fu Necktie. It's a bar in Philly. That is a bar in Philly. Damn. One for one. Okay. <laughs> Not fooled there. That was a sweet trap. It was a sweet trap. Ace in the hole. Porn. Two for two. <laughs> He's so confident. He's been studying. <laughs> He's been studying. <laughs> How about Harper's Garden? Porn. That's a bar. We got him. All right. All right. No perfect games no around perfect here. No perfect game. I feel better already. <laughs> All right. How about Bad Brother? Born. That's a dive bar. Wow. And that, dive bar. What a weird dive bar I'm name. I'm not going there. Bad Brother. How about Creepy PA? 
bar. <laughs> now that is a good trap because yeah, the PA, you yeah, immediately yeah, think yeah. Philly. PA is actually production assistants behaving badly. <laughs> PPPA. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, yeah. good trap. Good that trap. Was a great trap. That was a good trap. I feel good about that. Last one. How about tops? That's that, that could be a Philly bar for sure. He's yeah. right. That is a chill dive bar. <laughs> that's three out of five. That's that. That's a winner. Yeah. Kids winner. Philly does have a lot of stupid bar names. You have Philly some teams. weird bar names in Philly. The yeah. Plow and the it Stars. Was... Raw Dogs. That All could... of these are bars for that were named by white hipster kids absolutely exactly <laughs> the, mo- exactly what it the was. most there's white there's hipster so name many- of a bar i've ever heard of is finnegan's wake and that's like oh, a huge yeah, Lord. popular bar and is it it's yeah. a popular irish bar yeah. is that it philly's got dirty franks it's got uh yeah there, there's so many just like yeah it's really just it's it's hipsters it's guys who you know wax curl their mustaches at Finnegan's Wake, I am seeing so many curled mustaches. It's ridiculous. <laughs> a lot of curled mustaches. Yeah, they still they still clean the the glasses with spit and a rag. <laughs> oh, classy. <laughs> I can see it. Towel over the shoulder. <laughs> can I get you? <laughs> Appreciate you doing that. That was fun, Jay. Well, Big J will be out fully loaded at sea in Miami for the remainder of the month. Then at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco, November 3rd and the 4th. Tickets are still available, but going fast. You can find those tickets and stay well-informed on everything that Jay is up to at BigJComedy.com. His new special, Dog Belly, is not to be missed, and it's available at no cost to you on YouTube. Don't forget to check out Jay's podcast, Legion of Skanks, and The Bonfire on Sirius XM. Jay... You're one of our favorites, man. We could chug on your dong for the next 20 minutes, but just know that we sincerely appreciated this and look forward to hanging out again. Yeah. Oh, man, thank you guys so much, man. I'll see you next time in Phoenix, man. Please. Please, yeah, we'll be again. we'll be on camera then. We'll get you before you come in. Awesome. Perfect. Yes, please. Perfect. We'll reach out. Thanks again, Jay. Good luck on the cruise. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Jay. Right. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, buddy. Big Jay. Wow. Coolest guy on that side of the Mississippi effortless to talk to we got to hang out with jay over the weekend and he's just he's just fun and yeah. easy going guy i wanted to do another jersey bet have him wear a cowboys jersey on stage if he lost but we're oh on one against eagles fans i know i learned my lesson and we can't even find eagles jerseys around here to buy we so, tried yeah. we're, we're in the store fucking taking pictures with hats and t-shirts on. <laughs> is this gonna work for you i'm not gonna buy it like, <laughs> no. that's not happening you want to lend me a jersey for me to wear and take pictures that's fine i'm not going out spending 120 bucks on a Donovan McNabb, <laughs> Mitchell, <laughs> Mitchell and Ness. That might, may or may not fit. Funny story about last time Jay was in town. We found some of those sketchy, large, homemade capsules that were supposed to be micro doses that someone gave to us at that comedy event. Uh huh. I remember that. And you know what happens when you just end up in your closet for a rainy day and you run into them and you're like, ah, these probably aren't even still good. Bet they've lost all their potency and everything. <laughs> so we took a handful of them and went to go see Jay show. Got sat right up front, and I just remember going shit. <laughs> just crowd work like ninety percent of the time. I'm way too dilated. <laughs> we just sat there avoiding eye contact with them, <laughs> watching everyone around us get shit on. This time around, it was much better. We got the VIP treatment, and that was much better seating. We were still on the shrooms, but these were gummies and much more manageable. And nobody could tell because <laughs> we were in the corner. <laughs> It took a lot of willpower not to ask him why uh, Dan's no longer on the bonfire. I wanted to go there. It may be common knowledge, but I don't know it. I didn't want to go there, yeah. get them all salty. The Phillies are going to lose tonight anyway. We don't I need to like rub it in. Kick a horse while he's down. Man, don't kick a Jay while he's down. August Underground, a Serbian film. This is a man who's well-educated, well-adversed in the horror genre. No one go watch August Underground, by the way. Like, we're... We joked about that tonight. Or a Serbian film. Those are fun to joke about. Uh You're different after you see it. It's fucked up. Like, they're not fun. And... Now you know. And knowing, it's half the battle. You know what else I know? What do you know? New Dream Car giveaway over at 8080. In addition to the 15% off you get for using code Crunchy, every dollar you spend gets you entered in for a chance to win a brand new Lamborghini plus $60,000 in fun coupons you do not want to miss out. Nor do you want to forget to check out SomethingCrunchy.com where you'll find every episode or links for social media and the Almighty Crunch store where you'll find all kinds of crunch gear showing that you are a proud citizen of Crunch Nation. 
Join us every Friday night on 10 o'clock on 97.3 The Rattler. Or find us wherever you get your podcast. This has been another episode of Something Crunchy. And as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life. And be crunchy to one another. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. All episodes can be found at somethingcrunchy.com and on all podcast platforms. Thank you for listening. Letting words affect you at all like that is a waste of time. I've had so many situations where people would just laugh and get over themselves. It would be such a better time. And also, I give you this as a lesson for life. If you want to take lessons from a guy who wears a wallet chain still. (laughs) Take my advice, please. If you can learn to not let words affect you in a way that makes you like cringe up and ooh and ah, it is so liberating in life. You will never lose an argument, ever.